Hello, my name is Jason Evans of Aston Business School and together with my colleague and co-author Clive Kerridge of the University of Gloucester Business School we're using this virtual presentation to introduce our paper entitled Campus-Based Students' Perspective on Strategic Management Simulation, a Contextual Study. This paper represents an update and reaffirmation of a similar paper that we completed in 2012. Within the academic literature, there's debate on the use of simulation um, as a blended learning dimension. We know that simulation is used widely across business schools in management education. Interestingly, there are few best practice uh, prescriptive models for the use of simulations in this context. Furthermore, where there are a few best practice models, there's very little empirical evidence for the claims made by them. This therefore represents no consensus on the effectiveness of simulation models in this context. In our paper then, what we wanted to do was to consider learner level perspectives on simulation based learning in the management education context. We took an existing um, best practice model for the implementation of simulation based learning that was published by Salas and a group of researchers um, in 2009. What we found was that learner perspective very closely aligned to the espoused outcomes of that model when the model was implemented as prescribed by the authors of that paper. This presentation then will outline the basic literature that underpins our study. We'll then move on to talk about the methods that we use to approach the, um, the problem and then we'll finish with a discussion and conclusions um, section. If you would like to contact either myself, Jason Evans, or Clive Kerridge, you'll find our contact details at the end of this presentation. In this section, I'm going to outline some of the key literature that underpinned our study. It's going to be broken into a number of components. The first will focus on blended learning, as our study is uh, completed in this context. The second will look specifically at computerized online simulations. And finally, I'll outline the seven-stage model that we used um, as a basis for our study. In recent years, blended learning as both a term and a pedagogical approach um, has gained significant currency uh, in the higher education sector. In simple terms, blended learning can be considered as a combination of technology, enhanced and face-to-face -face learning. However, it's also argued that the effective integration of face-to-face -face and technology-enhanced learning will facilitate active learning engagement and foster deep learning. Uh, hopefully, this is a state from which positive outcomes for students can be observed. Naturally, it hasn't been without its critics. Some argue that it's simply a marketing buzzword for a repackaged product and that it adds nothing new. Others suggest that the term blended learning is in itself erroneous as it isn't necessarily the blend that um, delivers positive outcomes, but in fact, what's really being addressed is the delivery method of the teacher, lecturer, what have you. Further critiques suggest that the use of these approaches is more influenced by external uh, political environments and economic imperatives, uh, rather than, frankly, as a model in and of itself that enhances uh, learner experiences. Indeed, it's been argued that in the adult education context, it can in fact be counterproductive uh, as many older learners coming back to universities after periods of work may in fact be um, resistant to the use of computers and blended learning approaches in studying. Nonetheless, it's been argued that um, blended learning provides a cost-effective way of enhancing under-enrolled programs, more flexibility in scheduling, um, but it still retains a face-to-face -face learning element, and indeed it improves teaching loads for teachers that can then focus better on their abilities with the blended learning approach. It's also been strongly argued that blended learning um, caters to the needs of the more contemporary student um, as their expectations tend to be more centred around um, computer-based and face-to-face -face delivery as a blend. It suggested that this increases engagement and a more diverse learning in, uh, environment and more breadth and depth of learning have also been espoused as benefits of a blended learning uh, approach. And again, of course, the idea of flexibility is key here. 
As a component of blended learning, we've seen um, the rise of computerised and online simulations, particularly in the management education context. It's been argued that they are a self-paced, synchronous blended learning dimension that can be utilised as an integrated tool to enhance learner engagement and understanding, with the aims of the simulation ultimately being to imitate a system, uh, an entity or a process. Again, though, as with blended learning in broader terms, simulations um, can be seen to have a, a surrounding debate. Yet, in broad terms, despite the debate um, and some of the critique, current management education literature um, clearly aligns to the use of such tools um, with you know, quite uh, impressive outcomes um, that are espoused. For learners, this includes the advantages of experiential learning and practical experience, um, in addition to an academic education, which enhances the development of management skills, hopefully producing more effective managers um, and complex and realistic learning environments, um, provide a risk-free experimentation-friendly environment. Um, this can increase dynamic knowledge, inherent engagement of learners, uh, obviously deep learning, um, and enablement of learner-controlled study. It can be seen then that simulations in general terms align very well with the blended learning models and that they're seen to have positive outcomes for students. One problem though is that the majority of simulation based learning literature critiques and, and adds to academic understanding. The content though tends to be very descriptive in nature um, and so there are very few best practice models for the implementation and design of simulations that would aid facilitators, teachers, um, in realising the benefits of the simulation models that I've just explained. In 2009, Salas, Wildman and Piccolo produced a paper entitled Using Simulation-Based Training to Enhance Management Education. In this paper, they produced a seven-stage framework for the implementation of simulation-based learning or training. The seven stages include Student needs analysis, where we gain an understanding of what knowledge and skills the learners possess and what needs to be delivered in training. Next, educa the educational competences stage requires the development of a clear understanding of what the simulation will deliver in terms of the change in knowledge, skill or attitude that should occur as a result. The outcomes here are more general goals and in the uh, education context they will likely correspond with the overall programme goals or objectives. The learning objective stage, stage three, requires development of specific measurable training objectives that can either be task specific or task generic. These objectives should be specific, as specific as possible, directly addressing those competencies that have been specified in the needs analysis and clearly outline the requirements of satisfactory performance. The next day, the trigger events exercises, relates to a simulation being chosen that allows for students to demonstrate the competencies required and develop throughout the first three stages of the process. In our context, the management education context, this will likely involve selecting the business simulation that's most appropriate for you. The fifth stage, performance measures, involves embedding a performance measurement process that's objective, measurable and allows for quality feedback to students. The performance diagnosis stage, stage six, requires that the measures chosen be used to gather data. This data can then be used to compare against the desired outcomes developed in the first three stages of the process. It's also argued that the performance measured outlined in the previous step should measure both the outcomes and the processes within the training. This in turn will allow for the causes of performance to be related to the outcomes of this stage. Developmental feedback is the final stage of the process. It requires that feedback be given to students throughout the simulation process. In turn, this allows for adjustment of strategies and improvement of competencies. The authors argue that successful implementation following the model will result in specific competency outcomes. Firstly, effective problem solving. Secondly, entrepreneurship. And thirdly, leadership. Behavioural competencies are also expected outcomes of the prescriptive model. This is because models allow students to apply and practice retained knowledge, not only in improving skills, but also in inculcating desired behaviours. However, the available literature lacks support and empirical evidence to refute or support the outcomes that this model proposes. This is the lacuna that our study intends to address. In terms of methodology, our research was conducted with final year undergraduate student cohorts studying a strategic management module at a UK 
University Business School. There were three consecutive annual cohorts, each of approximately 160 responding students. Our study investigated the students' perceptions of a module with blended learning delivery incorporating a significant SBT, simulation-based training, element. The principal data collection was via an in-depth questionnaire investigating those students' perceptions. This included 16 categories and 120 questions in total. Most of the questions required response choices on a simple Likert scale of five, ranging from strongly agree to strongly disagree. The students were also asked for their evaluation of the different stages of the module, including how attitudes changed or evolved as the dominant pedagogy transitioned from more conventional teaching and assessment through to simulation-based training and associated assessment. Analysis of the questionnaire responses was supplemented with findings from a series of semi-structured interviews, each of 20 to 30 minutes duration, plus students' own written reflections on the module. The following video sequence includes comments from several students which give a flavour of the attitudes and perceptions at the end of the 2014 cohort's SBT exercise, which was conducted over several weeks. final decision for a business simulation. Uh, lots of fun, lots of hard work and yeah, let's see how it goes. We're, we're looking for the best share price. So yeah, yeah. Over the past five weeks we've been doing like a strategy sort of simulation and today we're sort of um, doing part six of that strategy simulation which is the final part. It's based in the marketing, the marketing communications industry. Our company is called WRSX. Um, basic simulation, sort of strategic simulation, see where we're going to be in six years time. Student responses to questionnaires, where there were 487 responses, showed substantially affirmative responses to the survey questions about engagement and improvement skills associated with the simulation-based training components. The survey outcomes were supplemented by a series of semi-structured interviews and written reflections. These were intended to bring an extra level of granularity to research analysis and findings. Evaluation of the supplementary studies is continuing and we expect that findings will be submitted for publication in the near future and this will form the basis for a rigorous longitudinal study concerned with development and validity of prescriptive models uh, for simulation-based training and their incorporation into blended learning pedagogies for management education. The items that are shown in Table 2 reflect knowledge, represented as K, skills, represented as S, and attitudes, represented as A, that were acquired by the students. These KSAs are a reflection of Stage 1 student needs and are the conduit that links between Stage 2 competencies and Stage 3 learning objectives. A mapping was performed to link the three stages together and you can see that in this slide. As an example, the competency of effective problem solving, which is a stage 2 competency, is dependent on critical thinking, which is a stage 1 student need, which in turn is met by one of the module's learning outcomes, for example learning objectives, uh, of demonstrating effective application of strategic management principles. An additional observation from the table relates to the levels of engagement and interest in the module associated with the simulation activity. Attitude responses LNM generated even higher scores than for perceived skill acquisition. This positive coefficient bodes well for the use of simulation-based training uh, in engaging students. The findings of our paper demonstrate a close alignment with the expectations of the prescriptive seven-stage model developed by Salas AL in 2009, which was already described, 
when applied to the case study module and its adopted blended uh, learning strategy of balancing didactic and SBT or simulation based training approaches. We find that the obtained and presented data support claims for the expected outcomes of the prescriptive seven stage model when that model is implemented as described. The survey data support this position by indicating that the computer based simulation undertaken and therefore the model that we tested has positively shaped the student strategic management behavioural competencies. The findings from this study contribute to the academic debate surrounding the use and efficacy of simulation based training within context of business and management education. We find that the model we tested is robust in terms of the case study module examined in the work that we present today and the use of simulation based training in this particular context has shaped students competencies in a positive manner. We believe that this is primarily because each of the seven stages of the model was addressed effectively by our team during the strategic management module delivery. We hope these findings will prove valuable for academics and practitioners with an interest in the use of simulation either as a blended learning dimension or as a standalone management education activity. Finally, our work suggests that further study in the area of employability and simulation based training would be fruitful moving forward. As authors, we welcome feedback and comments or further discussion on this paper. Jason Evans can be contacted at the Aston University Business School and Clive Courage can be contacted at the University of Gloucestershire Business School. Thank you very much for taking the time to listen to this presentation. We hope you found it useful and informative.